Now that we have our motors waxed, we're going to get and assemble our propeller assemblies. So our propeller assemblies consist of a single rod end, a propeller, and then two nuts that we'll use to hold them together. The first is called a T or a blind nut. And you'll notice that has some sharp prongs on the back side. The other nut is a lock nut and has a small nylon disc in it that allows it to bite onto the thread so that it won't come off. So we're going to take this and put this into our vise. Now some vices will have a nice little groove in it to hold a round shape. Those work best for this. But now that that's firmly in our vise, we'll take our first nut. This is the T-nut. And we're going to put that on with the spiky parts facing your fingers. Do your best to not stick yourself with them. And they'll be a little tight going on. So you, what you may need to use is grab a pair of these pliers and just work them to get the first few threads going. Once you get it, you know, the threads broken through, they'll spin right down. Um, so rather than chew up your fingers trying, just grab the, the pliers and go ahead and work them. Okay. And then it'll spin right down. Okay. Now our propellers have both a slotted and a non-slotted side. Okay. To help you see that slotted side, if you need to, you can always run the black magic marker across it and the slot will jump right out. Okay. So what we're going to do is take that slotted side and put it down towards the spikes. All right. Okay. Then we take the small nylon nut and put that on next. Now, if you really like to torture, you could take this with a small pair of pliers and slowly crank this down. I don't recommend that. You guys have all used screwdrivers that have replaceable screwdriver tips. Yep. This nut is that exact size. Uh, okay? So you can take any of those screwdrivers, and put it on the top here, and just drive this right down. All right? No pain, no frustration. Yeah, look at that. All right. And take this. You? So you're going to want to do is you're going to want to crank it all the way down. And that will give you one or two threads showing out the top. But the most important is you don't have a gap between any of these three parts. Okay. You know, if the little metal prongs come out to the side, that's fine. Okay. It's the, really the compression between the two that does most of that work. And you'll need to do that now for all three of your propellers. So why don't you guys... Go ahead and each try one. So sometimes you get lucky and you'll get one that will go right down. Mm -hmm. We've had some that we've really had to fight with. It's just luck of the draw. Keep going. You can always take a peek under it or at the nut because you're going to want to see a few threads sticking out. If it starts to spin on you, you can hold on to the propeller itself mm -hmm. to stop it from spinning, or you can crank tighter on the vise. Okay. There you go. So once you've gotten all your propeller assemblies put together, we're going to go ahead and glue those. Now, if at any point you have questions on the order that these go together, it's very well laid out in the manual as to which end goes where, how to put the parts together. You can always go back to the manual to refresh yourselves on that. So what we'll need next is the alcohol pads. And we're going to use those to clean off the shafts of the motors one last time. We've already done it twice now with the paper towels, so we've gotten all the wax off with the paper towel. This time we're going to use the alcohol pad, just get the last little traces of any wax. Now remember, you're going to want to do those to the side, not stretch them out the tip, because then you'll just spread wax all over them. So go ahead and put it on there, rub it, and take it off the side. Okay. And once you're done doing those, 
You go ahead and put that aside and we are now ready to super glue the shafts onto the motors. All right, so the way this works is you want to make sure that you get glue both on the shaft. So in this case, we'll put a drop or two on the side of the shaft and make sure it's spread up and down the shaft. And you want to make sure you get some inside the rod end or our shaft for the prop because it's better to have too much glue and have it pop out than to have not enough and have it fall off. So once you put it together, you're just going to set it aside. Now you'll notice in this case I have some super glue that kind of dripped off. That's fine. After it hardens, we're just going to turn this once and it's going to come loose right off the plastic. Okay. But okay. what we don't want to do is we don't want to move it at all until it's had a chance to set on the inside. So what we'll do is we'll take this and set it right inside our coil of wires while that cures and go ahead and do the next two. Back in the olden days, we actually used to do this with epoxy. And the epoxy works about as well with the one drawback of it's about a 24 hour cure time. Mm -hmm. So what we've been able to do with super glue is do it instantly. This will be ready to run in the water in less than five minutes and we haven't built our control boxes yet. Oh. So that's also good if you're on a pool deck and you lose a propeller, you can glue one on and literally throw the sea perch right back in the water. Mm -hmm. um, so once we started using it for emergency repairs, we decided that doing it for the first round made just as much sense that we weren't cleaning out old epoxy to go super glue them when we were on the pool decks. So a little, little tidbit of information for you. Now, if you have some sandpaper available, you can also sandpaper the ends of those shafts a little bit to rough them up, okay? You don't need to. It will help the bond a little bit better. Um, so if you have it available, that's great. If you don't, it's not the end of the world. They'll still bond pretty well like this. Uh, but again, it's another added thing you can do to increase the reliability of the part. If you have them falling off all the time, go right through and sandpaper them. And then when you glue them on, you'll have a better bond. All right, so we will now put those aside and we'll get out the equipment to do our control boxes and our final module of our Sea Perch build.